What's up, Culture Drop? Galen here. This is a part two video of the video that we already made, which is our younger employees entitled, talking about entitlement versus empowerment. So we had a ton of questions and comments on YouTube uh, and like a broader discussion. I wanted to answer some of the questions that came up. So uh, let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna share a handful of tips and tools of, of ways that you can make employees feel more empowered. Um, answer a couple questions directly, but just like share with you a number of different ways. So depending on the context of your organization, uh, these some of these may or may not apply to you. Number one, find ways inside employee experience to empower people and give them more autonomy, give them more decision-making power and ability and like look for ways to be like, where can we do this? Uh, one of the comments that came in, people were talking about having junior employees help creating like uh, policies, helping them like with onboarding initiatives and like having them just finding ways to f to have them take ownership of processes and systems and things inside the organization so they have more decision making power, more autonomy, like empowering them to help shape the organization. Second idea, I like this one a lot. This has a lot of different uses, but I think surveying and getting information from new employees. So, so when anyone joins the organization, 30 days after they get there, take a survey, right? What are you seeing? What are we doing? What could we be better at? survey them again at 90 days, like go to new employees and gather their information. It shows that you care about their input coming from the outside and respond to what you hear them say. Um, but it's a great way to sort of like make people feel listened to as they come into the organization. What things do you see we could do better, improve, innovate, etc. It's a great way to bring in people's voices. Third idea, this one's nuanced, but really important. Be clear when you're gathering input from your staff, whether or not they are giving input or they are part of making decisions. I think a lot of organizations or leaders fail in this regard where people think if they're giving input to something, they have equal parts decision-making power. Be really clear. In this decision, the final decision belongs to me or this person, um, but your input is really valuable. We will consider that and like let people know right off the bat, like in this instance, you are a decision maker or you are uh, somebody who's giving input and giving feedback. Another idea, I love this one. I'm actually doing a separate video about this because I have like expanded ideas on this one. Um, create situations where people can come and challenge the status quo. So create an environment specifically where you're asking for people to be like, hey, bring in things that you want to change that we could adopt or adapt or like new technologies, like come and pitch ideas to us and bring us ideas of things that we can do, but create the opportunity for that, right? If you have an employee who is like, oh man, they should change this or do this, they may not have the courage to come to you and say that. They might just be like, ah, oh, we should do this. They don't really get it. Create an opportunity to facilitate those conversations and have people bring ideas to you of how can we change? How can we improve? How can we be better? Tip number five, answering a specific question that came in from Hannah on YouTube, which was when someone suggests an idea, it's not feasible, we don't have the budget, it's a no right now, but maybe not forever. How do we deliver that in a way that makes that person feel listened to and empowered? Um, I actually created a video specifically about this. I'll put the link in, in terms of like how to deliver a no and really go through the process process of, of looking for ways to say yes, making that person feel listened to and, and prioritizing the relationship. So I'm gonna link that video instead of go through all the points right now because I don't have time, but it's a great question. Okay, my last point here, which I think is the most important and most effective way to make people feel empowered in the organization is that you have to start from day one onboarding people. And the way that you structure that conversation is to let people know and acknowledge, hey, younger people, newer people coming into the organization think that they know a lot. Uh, and we that have been here for a long time think that we know a lot and have experience. The reality is that both of us have information that we can learn from each other. And the way that we can navigate these types of conversations as an organization is through humility is that I know things from being in business for many, many years that you like you don't necessarily coming necessarily like right out of college. And you know things, right, with a fresh, young, new perspective uh, about business and ideas that like are way more innovative and better than ways that we do it. Both of us have to have humility to navigate those conversations, um, but from day one on toward people to set their expectations, to be like, we know that you have ideas, um, right? And it's typical for like everyone to think that they know everything. The reality is that not everybody knows everything. And this is an environment where we learn from each other, but we do it in a humble way, right? And here's the language. Here's how we approach these types of conversations here so that they can be productive and we can all learn from one another. Thanks for watching and tuning in. Subscribe to our channel. We put a lot of content on here. You can also subscribe to the Culture Drop mailing list and get these emails in your inbox every Tuesday morning. Follow our social media channels. Uh, put a lot of free content out about just being more awesome and building great teams.